Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 3.5, which is regarding overlapping triangles. At this point in time, I'd like you to pause the video and do three things for me. Uh, the first thing that I would like you to do is label the vertices of all your triangles, as you see here on your screen. Redraw the triangles two more times, again with the vertices, and get a highlighter. So now you should actually have these triangles um, written out three times and we're going to take a look at each of these and we're going to figure out how many triangles are in each figure. Um, obviously we have the larger triangle here when we're looking at A. Uh, we're talking about triangle ACD. We have several triangles within there. The one that we could possibly prove congruent, obviously we don't have any givens, um, if we first highlight the smaller triangles on the left and right here we could actually see that we have triangle FBC. It might be possible to prove that congruent to triangle FED according to our givens. But again, this is two sets of triangles that we might be able to actually prove congruent to each other depending upon the givens. If we then look at the same diagram here, now if we start to think about, we have a lot of also triangles on here that have overlapping parts. For example, we did start with side BC over here, but if we go along the base of the triangle, we're now looking at triangle BCD. And the key to that is we could probably prove that congruent, again, depending upon our given information to triangle EDC. What's important about this type of a triangle, this is what we call an overlapping triangle because they actually share a side and that side would be CD and again it's the entire side. It's not just part of that side. So we could use the reflexive property actually um, because again it's contained in both triangle BCD and triangle EDC. So now let's take a look at this triangle again, and again, thinking about overlapping triangles, is there any other sets of triangles we could possibly prove congruent if they share another side, another, or an angle, or something to that effect? And again, taking a look here, if we take a look at this picture, now we can look at triangle ACE, and we could possibly so that's congruent to triangle ADB. In this one, they do share an angle. And the angle in this one is angle A, as contained in both the red and the green triangles. Taking that exact same approach, let's move on to uh, the second row of triangles. If we look at the ones that are not overlapping at all, again, we have these ones on the left and on the right. They do not actually share a side or an angle. This would be triangle ABC. And that is congruent or could be possibly proved congruent to triangle AED. ABC to AED. Now let's see if they share any sides, any angles, any parts of sides, parts of angles, different things of that nature. So you can see that this we have this portion in the middle here. We have angle AED. That could be added on to both of these two triangles on the left and the right. So we could be looking at triangle ABD as well as we could be looking at triangle AEC. So we could possibly prove triangles BAD. BAD to triangle EAC. And actually in the second row of triangles here, there's really not another possibility that we could prove in terms of overlapping triangles. So I'd like you at this point in time to pause, take a look at the uh, third set of triangles here, and figure, and see if you can come up with another pair of triangles that would be overlapping. So again, taking a look at C, 
three different diagrams and seeing if you could possibly come up with pairs of triangles. So here are the three sets of triangles that you could prove congruent. The one on the left hand side does not have any overlapping parts. However, the two, the middle one and the one on the right, do share overlapping sides. Uh, the one in the middle, uh, triangle ABD and triangle DCA, they share side DA, as well as the one on the right, uh, they share the side BC. So these are um, the various triangles that we could identify within those third, that third row. Obviously, these were missing the givens. So the givens really does set the roadmap for what triangles we'd have to prove um, would need to be proved congruent in order to solve the actual proof. So there's a couple suggestions I have. First of all, obviously we want to mark the givens as we typically do, but you might want to use a highlighter. For example, if you see AC is congruent to uh, DB, that can be difficult to mark on here because we have a lot of overlapping portions. So you could simply highlight it as such, or you can see as what I've done here on the bottom, I have actually split them apart and I split them apart where um, I see that AC and DB will form a triangle. Then I want to mark the other givens. AB is congruent to DC. I'll go ahead and mark those down here as well. Little forward thinking though, we want to actually take a look at the proof statement. Now typically um, this will either be the angle of the side that's within the triangle we want to prove congruent. Not always, but typically it does form the angle in this case of the triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and just use my highlighter and highlight the segments that form those angles. So we really have two options for triangles. We have the smaller triangle ABE and DCE or the two overlapping triangles. Again, I'll highlight the angle A and angle C there. If we want to take a look at the two smaller triangles, we can go ahead and draw those to the side, separate those outside of the diagram, just like we did with the larger triangles below. Highlight the given information. So we have AC is congruent to DB, which is not in our diagrams, but we do have AB is congruent to DC. The only other thing we could get from the diagram are these vertical angles um, assumed from diagram. However, that's not enough information to prove those congruent. But if we look at the two larger triangles at the bottom, we should recognize that if we're highlighting those, we are going to be seeing that they actually share the side BC. So we could prove that these two triangles, uh, which would be triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle DCD. Moving on to the next examples, you will see that the triangle is the same for all three of these examples. However, all the given and the proof statements are different. Again, we want to follow the lead of the given statements as well as forward thinking, looking at the proof statement in order to identify which triangles need to be proved congruent in order to solve the proof. So let's go ahead and start with our given. So we have angle CDB congruent to angle BEC. BD is congruent to CE. Now I'm going to highlight the proved statement, which is segment BF is congruent to segment CF. Knowing this, again, typically this is going to be the sides of the triangles that need to be proved congruent. Not always, but it's a great place to start. So let's look at these sides. Well, clearly this forms um, triangle DBF as well as the side of triangle ECF. So if we take a look at those from our given information, we can clearly see, we can assume vertical angles, so yes, we could prove that triangle DBF would be congruent to triangle ECF. Moving on to the next example, which again is the exact same triangle. Let's highlight our givens. CDB, BEC, side AD and side AE are congruent. And again, forward thinking, looking at our proof statement. 
BE. Now I'm going to highlight that again. Notice it's crossing over a couple parts here. And I'm going to highlight DC as well. Again, typically that could be the side of our triangle. Um, and we have a couple different options here. We have the one on the bottom, DBC, as well as ECB. However, I'm going to lean towards looking at the one at the top because I see I have a little bit of information already marked on there with our givens. So I'm going to separate these triangles. I have ADC, and then I also have ABC. Switching colors here so you can see that a little bit better. Highlight our givens. Now this angle is not inside the triangles, however, AD and AER. And they do also share angle A. So that would be a reflexive property. Before we give up on this though, let's take a look at our givens. Could we somehow use this given information of these angles being congru congruent to each other to get the angles inside the triangles congruent. And we can because we can assume straight angles which would then give us um, angles are supplementary to congruent angles. So the triangles that we would need to prove congruent would be triangle BAE to triangle CAD. Rewrite that there. Now in the third example, again, exact same triangle, different given and prove statements. Please pause on this one, mark the givens, try to figure out um, by highlighting the prove statement which triangles you think we need to prove congruent in order to actually uh, solve the proof. Okay, I have the givens marked on here, and I'm going to highlight angle FDA and FEA. Um, again, this is forming a triangle, however, hopefully you notice that we would be able to connect points AF, um, which would then allow us to do triangle DAF would be congruent to ang uh, triangle EAF, so DAF to triangle EAF. And let's go ahead and take this a step further and let's actually prove this. So we have our given statements, DF congruent to EF and AB is congruent to AE. And then we also have to draw segment AF with two points then they determine the line. Then we can use our reflexive property. Then we can prove the triangles DAF congruent to triangle EAF by side, 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 and listing those steps. That would be step one, two, and four. Then the proof statement angle FEA is congruent to angle FEA by CPCTC. Moving on to the last example, I'd like you to go ahead and finish this for class tomorrow and use a flowchart proof uh, to prove this. And please remember to um, mark your givens and use your highlighter to do some forward thinking to look at the proof statement. And this concludes section 3.5.